Awesome. We're going to take an opening statement from head coach Gino Damari, and then we'll go right into questions. Gino, go ahead. Well, it just um, kind of felt like the game today going into it was going to be kind of like this uh, after playing a game like we did last night. Um, you know, it's hard to duplicate that in baseball. Um, and so I just felt like this game was going to be one of those where we were you know, going to go to their team and our team probably going to go to the bullpen and uh, it was going to be a closer game and uh, going to come down to the end there. And so um, and it kind of worked out that way. Um, but was happy to see, you know, we uh, we fell behind and answered right back beginning there. Big home run by Anthony uh, Villar with the two run home to tie it. And then, of course, we added another run, too, as well there with Dell, the home run by Dell. So uh, it's nice to get the long ball again. Got that going. And um, I thought the pitchers all threw well. I don't believe we walked anybody. I don't have a final here, but I think I know P Palmquist didn't. So we didn't walk anybody and had about 12 strikeouts, maybe. The pitching staff did a phenomenal job. Of course, Palmquist, we brought him in, you know, with two outs in the seventh, which was our plan. Uh, it was a, I, had, I had a feeling that this was probably going to be the last game. And uh, but whether it was or wasn't, we had a chance to win it. We were going to get it done. Uh, just uh, so uh, with him coming in at that time. So very happy um, to get the sweep, two game sweep it is, but still sweep and um, keep this thing going. Awesome, Gino, our first question for you comes from Christopher Stock of Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Gino, it, it seemed like that last game against Virginia Tech, you kind of almost second guessed by not putting Carson in a little bit. And then ever since then he's getting, this is his third straight <laughs> multiple, multiple inning save. Was that a conscious effort to get him in there multiple inning and get him in there in tight spots like this? And then also what, what leaves you, uh, what gives you confidence that he's was able to do that? Um, Cause he's obviously been effective. Well, what gives me confidence is obviously his success that he's had here since he's been here. Although, you know, last year was cut short. Um, he missed a few games early, but when he's ever, ever since he's been pitching for us, he's been here, he's been pretty dominant. He's been our most dominant pitcher. He was our most dominant pitcher this fall our most dominant pitcher and that's including everybody. He's the MVP of our fall pitching. Um, so, I mean, obviously it makes a coach look good when you can turn to a guy like that, but yeah, you're right against Virginia tech. If I had to do it over again, because we didn't play any midweek games after Virginia tech and, and um, we could have brought him in there. He, he did not pitch much on Saturday against Virginia tech. Was not a lot of pitches. So he could have come in early and they had a lot of lefties in the lineup that they would not have taken out, but it is what it is. You live and learn. Um, so, uh, but yeah, our plan, JD and I had spoken that if we had the lead, we were probably going to go to Aguas and to, uh, uh, Palm quest. But then when it got into that situation, when we said, okay, if we get two outs in the seventh, we'll probably just go to Carson, uh, in the situation that we were in and we did. And, um, he, he wasn't sharp as sharp as he's been. Um, but again, he's so talented, uh, and, uh, he was able to work through it. All right, Gina, we're going to go to Wyatt Kopelman of UMTV. Wyatt, go ahead. Coach Tamari, that's the second straight ACC series win for this ball club. Could you just tell me about what the locker room mood's like going into uh, the next week? Well, they're probably dancing on tables in the locker room right now because they got the day off tomorrow, <laughs> which is not normal. That's the, that's a very uh, un, uh, just unique situation that with COVID, here we go. We, we're our first probably um, – uh, situation where we got to deal with it, but because they uh, have been hit with COVID and they, they, we knew this was a possibility coming into the series that they might only be able to play two. Um, you know, we could practice tomorrow. I personally think it would be probably a, not a very good practice. The other thing is Fetterman, you know, we need him to throw. So we got to make sure we set something up for him to be able to throw, um, but it's not going to be a simulated game. Um, Basically, uh, the guys are very happy. They look, they're confident right now. I think we're playing pretty well as a team. We got to continue to get better. And, uh, but they're, they're excited for the two wins and also the fact that they got tomorrow off. All right, Gina, we're going to go back to Chris Stock of Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Gina, can you, can you explain that decision process? I know that they had let you guys know that that was a possibility of not playing tomorrow. When did that get announced, I guess? Um, right, after, right after the game. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were still planning going into this game that um, to play the three games, but I kind of had a feeling uh, going into this this game if it was a situation where it was close and uh, you know they're going to bring in some different guys. They they brought in quite a few guys, and uh, although none of them threw a lot, 
um, but he brought in a lot. And just basically we so, uh, communicated that we would talk after the game and uh, he let me know because uh, obviously we needed to know for to prepare for Sunday or not to prepare. And he just told me that uh, there was no way that they could play nine, nine innings with the amount of pitchers they had available. Um, and, and I want to get your take on Victor's outing tonight. What'd you, what'd you think of, what'd you make of him tonight? Well, um, good. I thought he was doing a good job, really good job of getting ahead of hitters, uh, especially with his off speed stuff. He was getting ahead of hitters. Um, I have to look at the velos. He looked good early on. It looked like he came down a little bit, but again, I'll go by the scoreboard. Our, our gun there that we do is the real thing. So, but outstanding in terms of no walks, seven strikeouts, um, I made a mistake there. I wanted to get him out. We didn't have our pitcher ready in the pen for that righty Wilkin that hit the home run. I wanted to bring somebody in at the time. And it's just, our guy was not ready to go in at that time. And, um, and I thought he was, but he wasn't. And, uh, you know, that was a, that's my fault. You know, I wish we could have got him out there. He wouldn't have given up those, uh, that hit there and that two run home run, uh, I think it was a two run home run, but yeah, I thought he pitched well. I mean, he just, you know, I'd like to see his velocity stay up a little bit more consistently from the beginning. Um, but he's still a young guy. And again, freshman throwing, um, you know, against a very good lineup. That's a very good lineup. Most of those guys are familiar names and that's from two years ago. We played them at Wake Forest. That's a lot of veteran guys in that lineup. Highly touted, by the way, preseason guys that are very highly touted. So, um, again, I, I thought he did a, a good, solid job. And, again, the, of course, the bullpen did a good job coming in after. And just lastly for me, is just Villar, um, he just continues to hit. I mean, it comes up big for you guys. What are you getting from him right now? Power. We're getting some power and some clutch hitting. I mean, he was. we gave him the MVP of the game today. Could have gone to a few other guys. But I just felt like – he deserved it really for just how hot he's been and, and big hits he's been getting. And that's a huge home run because you're down three to one after they hit theirs and you're a little deflated a little bit, but you got to bounce back. There's a lot of game left and boy, we answered right back there with the two run Homer. And then of course Dell's home run. So, I mean, he's given us a lot of power. Um, he's settled in at second base. That's his position. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he's done a really, really good job there. And, He's kind of a quiet leader on our team. He, he, he's, he's, he, he probably um, leads more than anybody on our team with his voice. And his voice usually is, is a powerful one that players respect. So just very, very happy with Anthony and how he's playing. And, um, you know, hopefully he can continue to do that. Awesome. Gino, thanks for taking the time to talk with us. And congratulations on the victory. Okay. Thank you, guys.